Good evening. WXXI TV and WXXI FM present a Christmas Eve service from Asbury First United Methodist Church on East Avenue in Rochester, New York. Good evening. I'm Bob Owens, program manager of WXXI TV, and with me is William Burdick, one of the pastors. This evening's telecast is the first live local production in full stereophonic sound on WXXI TV and simulcast on FM 91.5. Bill, thank you very much for inviting us for this evening's Christmas service. Bob, we're very glad to have you and have WXXI invite us to share this community service of celebration of Christ's birth. Asbury First is a United Methodist Church dating back to 1820. It has a long history that's exciting and rich. As a United Methodist Church, it is a merger of Asbury Methodist Church and First Methodist Church over 50 years ago. Our church is noted for its architectural beauty, the symbolism of the sanctuary, its music ministry, as well as for its community outreach and such programs as the storehouse and the daycare center. We are glad to have you here and hope that the celebration of the Christ child's birth, which we observe this holy night, may be rich in its meaning and significance for you. Later in the service, there will be a lighting of the Christ candle. The church will be darkened and everyone will light a small candle symbolizing the scripture, Behold, we have seen a great light. We invite those of you at home to join in this symbolic act. You may want to have a candle and matches ready. Now as the choir processes, may we enter into the spirit of worship.
Please be seated. Let us pray. O God, who prepared the minds and hearts of people long ago for the coming of your Son, and whose spirit illumines our darkened lives with the light of the gospel, prepare our hearts so that we may joyfully receive Christ now. May he ever reign in our thoughts and affections as the God of love and peace. Amen. that scripture and music are important in the celebration of Christ's holy birth. Hear this word of God from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness on them has light shined. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask a sign of the Lord your God, let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men that you weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a young woman shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Hear the word of God from the Gospel of Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, the son of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and he said, Hail, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and considered in her mind what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Bring for the Savior, 
hear these words known as the Magnificat. In those days Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a city of Judah, and she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the voice of your greeting came to my ears, the babe in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has regard regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of the hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of low degree. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his posterity forever. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. 
This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be enrolled, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in that region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among all with whom God is pleased.
the word of God. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph in the babe lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying which has been told them concerning the child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary kept all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. God as it comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will govern my people, Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. When they had heard the king, they went their way, and lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy, and going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother. And they fell down and worshipped him. 
Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way.
Dr. Whedon is our coordinating pastor and a New Let Testament us pray. scholar. O oh God, may the Spirit of Christ be so one with our spirit that in these moments as we ponder as Mary pondered that the full meaning of Christmas may be ours. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Ever since we first heard the story of the wise men bringing gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, we have known that the spirit of Christmas is made present in the giving of gifts of love to others. So it is that in these days and weeks leading up to Christmas, much of our time, effort, and attention has been devoted to shopping for those who have special places in our hearts. It is not surprising then that the searching and persistent question that has preoccupied us is what shall I give? What shall I give him? What shall I give her? What shall I give them? It's a question that cannot be answered hastily, nor does the answer come quickly. We turn it over in our minds. We do so because we are concerned that we find a gift that is not just fitting, but is just right for that person we have in mind. The gift must be them. And sometimes when we are fortunate and find that perfect gift, we'll exclaim, that's him, that's her, that's perfect. It's important to find that gift. We'll go to any extent, spare almost any cost. Suffer the cold, bitter winter, weather of winter. Drive almost futilely up and down the lines of parked cars and parking lots and up around the ramps and parking garages looking for that parking place that someone else just got before us. We'll trudge from store to store, feet tired, bone weary, standing in endless lines waiting for the cashier to take our gift and for us to take it home. And then when we come to the fulfillment of that search and the gift is our, we collapse tired, exhausted, but with consummate satisfaction. And then something interesting happens. We begin to dream the dream of anticipation reminiscent of like it was when we were children, only this time the dream of actually anxiously awaiting Christmas Day to see what we may have received is a dream in which we anxiously await to see how what we have given will be received. And so we imagine in our hearts the surprise on that loved one's face, the joy, the delight, the tears in the eyes, the spontaneous hugs that come from a deeply felt thank you. But in those dreams, 
there come often those nagging, sometimes stabbing questions. Will she like it? Will it make him happy? Will she know how much it meant for me to buy that? Will he know how much I really love him? Long before the three wise men brought their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh to the Christ child, and long before we thought of even searching for our own gifts, God agonized over a gift. God's gift-giving dilemma was different than ours. Our gift-giving occurs within the circle of close, happy relationships, usually. God's gift-giving took place in a setting of strained, alienated, and broken relationships with God's family, you and I. For time after time, God had attempted to express God's love to humanity in countless ways, but it seemed each time God was either rebuffed rejected, the gift that he, God was given either cavalierly accepted or callously passed off with mocking contempt. And so God struggled as God sought to give a gift, to know what gift would best express God's love for us. God's prophetic advisors counseled God that he ought to give up on the whole thing. God ought to just forget these recalcitrant, faithless, sinful people. But God thought otherwise. God did not feel that broken relationships can be healed through punitive retribution. God knew the only way to heal the brokenness of a relationship was through fully given love. And so as God thought of the gift that God might give, that gift that would be perfect, that gift of gifts, it suddenly occurred to God, I know what I'll give. I'll give myself. I'll give myself in human form and I'll give it on Christmas morn. So it is that God risked all possibilities of rejection. God braved the hum humiliation of human indifference. And God searched from end to end to find a place where God to, could be until finally God came to lay in a manger. There God laid, helpless, vulnerable in love, in the tenderness of the life of a baby born to two simple peasants. The lines of Hark the Herald Angels say it well. Veiled in flesh the Godhead see, 
Hail the incarnate deity, pleased with us, with us to dwell. Jesus, our Emmanuel. But like us, God also has the dreams of anticipation, anxiously awaiting to see how that gift will be received. God imagines deep within God's own heart the smiles of surprise, the joys, the tears of happiness. And God, like us, also has in those dreams of anticipation those stabbing questions. Will they like my gift? Will they be happy with it? Will they know how much it meant to me to give it to them? Will they know finally how much I love them? The answer to those questions can only come from us. God ponders the questions. We possess the answers. How shall we respond to God's questions this Christmas? Will they like my gift? Will they know how much I love them in giving it? That's a question that you and I will must answer. As for me, I don't know how it could be better said than what I saw Sunday in that beautiful strip called Ziggy. Those of you who saw the strip recall that Ziggy was standing on a big snow pile and he was dressed for winter weather for he had a long, heavy winter coat on and galoshes that came up to almost his knees. And he had a red and green scarf tied around his neck and a funny little cap on that had a bill on it and an earmuff-like flaps over his ears. It was nighttime because you could see the blue night sky and one star in the distance. The snow was falling gently, tenderly, and Ziggy was transfixed looking up into the heavens at the star. In that mystery of that moment, Ziggy, looking up into the star, says, it is that time again this year when we thank you for caring enough to send us your very best. Amen. Merry Christmas.
Jesus Christ is our gift, and the gift for the whole world. He came as a child, he taught, and he ministered as a compassionate and vulnerable human being, and now he guides us as the spirit of peace and love. In him, we see the very best of our own lives revealed. To that great gift of God, we now respond with our own. Will you join me in prayer? Gracious and loving God, who has prepared us for this night by demonstrating that every act of giving opens the door to life itself, guide us as we share our material wealth and bless us and our world in the spirit of Jesus the Christ. Amen.
May we lift our hearts in prayer. Most gracious God, we celebrate tonight the presence of your promise in our midst. It is in the promise of a small child coming into a crowded, hurting world and growing to be a liberator. It is the promise of experiencing your incredible love reaching out to us through Jesus giving wisdom and peace for our journeys. It is the promise of your presence for each of us, struggling, stumbling, and yet growing and celebrating, reaching out to make a new presence in our world. May the simplicity of the Christmas story and the confidence of fulfilled promises bring about a quietness and reverence for those things clothed in humility and innocence. In the mystery of this night, O oh God, give to each living soul some bit of beauty, some vision of loveliness as a sign and seal of your promise, on which we may stand secure through our nights and our days. Because of your gift so long ago and the continuing gift of Christ's presence, gifts will be open and love shared. Keep us mindful, O oh God, that you are the true source of abundance and worth. Families have gathered and loved ones returned. May we always remember that Christ calls us to our tables with Christ as our host. The trees are trimmed. Let their garlands and tributes awaken assurance of your grace. Fill the stockings of our hearts with the good gifts of your grace and love, so that we may become a sign of your love as we do justly and love with mercy. As Christmas morning dawns, lead us from this sanctuary of beauty and praise into paths filled with your light and promise. 
Bathe the world, O God, as you will in the tenderness of Christmas tide. Let every work of love be a sign of promise of peace on earth and goodwill among God's people. May we always accept Christ's call to fulfill the task of reconciliation and love. We come now, O God, as your people, a people of God, to share your promise of hope and light. The light of Christ shines forth out of darkness. May that light illumine our journeys. May we accept in simple faith his coming. And may we accept the boundless miracle that you came and you come if Christ be cradled in each of our hearts. So in his spirit, O oh God, we now receive that light to be given unto the world through each of us. Amen. Okay, kids. The symbol of light is important to Christians. It reflects the idea of being able to see. The scriptures mention people who describe their encounter with Jesus as before I was blind, but now I see. The scriptures also describe the world as being in great darkness, the symbol of alienation from God. And Christ's birth brought the people out of darkness. Light permits the distinction of the subtle differences and nuances in life. We see the textures, the shades, the tones. We can see the pluralism of our world and society and affirm it. The creation stories indicate that after God created, there was light in which the creation could be embraced as good. It only takes a little spark to pass this light one from another. It would be better, a better world, if we began doing it this night and carried it throughout the days and years ahead.
light of Christ go with you, and with your light taken from his light, go and bring light unto the world in his name. Amen. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. This has been a meaningful service for each of you. We were delighted that WXXI asked us to share this celebration with the greater Rochester community. We at Asbury First wish everyone might have a very Merry Christmas and a happy and healthy New Year. Bill, on behalf of WXXI, we very much appreciate your inviting us for this Christmas Eve presentation.